Test, test, test. There we go. So I do hear a delay. Okay. Okay, I think the echo is gone now. So we should be able to go ahead and carry on. Okay. Hey, is there any chance you could, April, log on to Facebook and see if you can hear me through that app, if, it's, if the audio is coming through and not echoing? It would just be my regular profile. Hello. So Marie, hi Marie, how you doing? <clears throat> Hopefully you can hear me. Um, I haven't gotten confirmation yet that the audio is working, but we're gonna go ahead and hit record on my other device and let's just do this. So today we're gonna focus mostly on zines, artwork, doodles, comics, and many things, things inspired by the diagnosis of ADHD that I've gotten recently and again. Okay, thank you Marie. Marie just confirmed that we have audio, so We'll just move on, and um, hopefully the audio is not muffled. If it's muffled, it might be mumbly because I do mumble. So <clears throat> let me coat the throat with some coffee. There we go. All right, so just to review real quick here, I'll show in the frame here that some of the covers, prints, and designs – just things that I would do whenever, um, again, this happened because I was bottlenecking so hard on trying to get um, trying to get going on some of the art projects and comics that I needed to do. And then I realized that part of the issue that was happening was obviously the ADHD and um, you know, executive um, dysfunction. So then I just started doing a whole bunch of these um, that were just fun to do and relaxing and you know, then afterwards, after I did it, oh, I was inspired to do more of this and also talk about it. Thank you so much, Marie. But, um, and I'm no, by no means the best Zentangler or Zen Doodle or, or Mandala um, artist. But what I like about this type of medium is that anyone can go ahead and just start doodling and start um, just trying out different lines, botanicals, things that are, that you're interested in. And, you know, hopefully something comes about it. So we're going to work on a couple of these, and now these also have some patterns that I'm working on, but that's for a different subject. And you can see that these are also other designs that are waiting for me to get, to get done. Some of these will serve as a covers to my comics, and some of these will probably just be like postcard or prints that I do once I've done coloring and all that. I need to confirm whether or not I can ink over watercolor and watercolor pencils, or I have to lay down my ink first and then watercolor in between those, um, I get the chemistry mixed up. So I need to um, check with my friend, Hello Alice, and see what she recommends because she's an awesome artist and has been doing YouTube art for quite a while and has uh, several videos on a, um, on um, watercolor. But I'm just not really sure when it comes to doing the ink again. I forget how that works because I've never been really confident in watercolor. But I know it's something that I want to tackle. And so these right here are the mock-ups for those different zines and comics. So that way I knew what page was happening. So they average about 16 to 20 pages. By the time I'm done with the covers and all that, it'll probably be like a nice little 24 page booklet. And then some of these will be more of an accordion style book. So for example, 
it might start right here and then expand out and flip over. I have some other ideas too for some fold out type of comics, but going to start a little bit smaller and more capable. Um, so let me see. Okay, thank you. Uh, so it depends on the type of ink I'm using. So yeah, I got to figure out what ink won't activate. If I go with um, watercolor on top of inks, I have to find out which what which which ink won't be reactivated. And then if I go with um, thank you, Marie. Yep. Um, so then. So it's all it's all going to be something that I need to um you know kind of try out and that can be done with swatching. I don't necessarily have to ruin my piece or anything like that. You can try that with swatching. In fact, I would I highly recommend swatching anything if you're not really too familiar with it or if you're not really sure what kind of blend you're going to get. I definitely recommend you go ahead and do some swatching on a sample of the same stock that you're using and with the same medium materials that you're using. So that'll be something um that I can explore here pretty soon. So I'm hoping to get all the pencils laid out when it comes to these um, analog versions that I'm doing. The other stuff I'm doing is actually on the iPad, and I can show you some of those in progress too. So we're going to work in the doodle book that I have here. We're going to work on the actual accordion one. We might start some of the other ones, and then um, we're also going to. I'm also going to work. Um... Oh, nice. Okay, so. Um, uh, I'm not sure how to say your name, but W. Uh, Zuta um, recommends that um, you know using pigment pens or any ink, none of those will reactivate with water. So then um, I might be able to lay down some ink first. I'd rather lay down the watercolor though, and then use the watercolor pencils on top of it after it's dried, and then go back in and with, and doodle on top. I would love to ink on top and uh, just doodle on top. So, oh Wendy, okay, hi Wendy. <laughs> so. I gave you just like crazy exotic name. So, all right. Anyways, thank you for everyone that's cruised in here. So I almost was not going to like just spend a little bit um tiring trying to get streams going. doesn't help that my energy level has been kind of doing whatever it wants to do. So let me see if I can find you that find the comic I was working on on the iPad. So for those of you that don't know, I work with a digital and an analog and sometimes a hybrid process. Here it is. Okay. Let's put this in the frame. Oh, you can see that nasty ring light, can't you? Yeah, I got a ring light and I thought I was gonna have these nice little halos in my eyeballs and all it does is show up on the reflective screen of my iPad. So let's go ahead and turn the opacity. Is it the opacity that's not showing? I'm gonna turn the grid off. So we'll go to the canvas and we'll take the drawing guide, click it off, and then we'll zoom in on these. So this is just kind of like, I did some photo ref, photo tracing on here, took my own photo and then, and then I actually kind of like it so I might leave the photo in it. So, um, and then we also have, but this is actually all one page booklet spread for now. So I'll do the first one on that and then we'll go beyond that. And then um, I might expand beyond that, so. So I'm doing a combination of both iPad um, um, digital drawing comics as well as um, ink comics. And we finally got the GNOME one laid out. So, um, but today I wanna work analog. I really enjoy working more analog and traditional when it comes to these streams because it's just nice to have that feel, you know, the tactile feel. So, okay. Wow, there's definitely a lot more people here during this time than there was usually in the morning when I stream. I like to try and stream Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday mornings. Well, I say morning, but sometimes I don't get up till later. Um, so it's more like around 11-ish, 11 a.m. 11 East Coast time. So when last we um, were together um, on the stream, I had actually went and doodled and drew surrounding areas of this anxiety A right here, or anxious A. And last time before that, we had did this in different stages. So we've had about one, two, three, maybe three to four sessions here um, that we've done. Yeah, and so as you can see, it um, when I take this little bookmark out, it fills up the whole frame. And it's kind of nice. I might reprint this somewhere else in one of my zines. So 
that's the cool thing about doing these little experiments, especially when I get stuck, is that maybe later on I can actually repurpose them into something else, into another piece of artwork. And so um, before I was having problems trying to um, maneuver my left hand because of the other tripod I had that was holding up the phone to film for later on for YouTube. But I since realized I could turn this on the other side and still get the shot I needed. And so I have a little more freedom, but I've also included this Yeti mic to try and get better audio. And I still have a little more freedom, but I'm still kind of knocking into things. So um, I'm not sure if we'll do inking yet on here, but um, you know, at the very least, we still have some other penciling to do. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so when last we also worked on this, which was also the same um, time, we had aware that we went and um, drew out and angry. And these were all the letters and words that begin with A that normally have you know, negative emotions that are surrounding. Um, for me personally, some of the things that I, I encounter when I'm dealing with the fallout from ADHD, depression, and anxiety, and when I see PTSD kicks in. So what I, the whole concept is to go ahead and draw these out with the different textiles, and then we're going to tangle around them. But this is where that thing comes into play about whether or not watercolor or ink would come first, basically. Um, so, like, for example, like, if I could lay down some watercolor, I'll use some of that. Um, I can't even remember the name of it, but the liquid adhesive, whatever, that covers up this. So that way you, you don't paint over the areas you don't want to. But do some watercolor first and then we'll let that dry. And then the next time we'll come back in with some watercolor pencils and get a, another layer going. And then finally go ahead and ink and tangle and doodle and fill in all these different spaces and everything like that. But we still have the text to figure out. So let's go ahead and do that. I think I was going to flip it to the other side because I was taking it slow, kind of like easing into it and mainly, mainly sticking with the um, short words. So. Thank you on the on the confirmation of the audio. It's been a struggle trying to get some things to work around here. Um, I had some other earbuds that I still cannot get to work. They want a pin number. I don't know why that is. But, um, yeah, 1% better each time we stream. That's kind of the goal here. So we'll just keep going. So for Awful, I have to come up with a style that I'm going to use for this text. I've already got that jagged wild style look going right here on the on the aware it's more like the no fear if, if you remember that from the 80s and 90s and then i also have the cloudy brain fog of angry now we're going to go and figure out what awful is going to be so sometimes i like to juxtapose you know you can see the word awful and I'm, part of me wants to juxtapose and make that really elegant and beautiful looking but i don't really do beautiful that well or elegant you know unless it's um you know my family oh that's how smooth wasn't it Anyways, um, yeah, so maybe we won't go for an elegant look um, or a classy look. Maybe we'll just go ahead and block it in and, and, and let it go from there. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Or maybe I'll just, yeah, you know what? We're going to go fuzzy. Because when you're awful feeling... It's almost like this is a water tissue that you, you know that you accumulate when you feel awful. So let's go ahead and um, let's just lean into that basically. And it's just fun, you know, when you realize that you can just go ahead and you know, no mistake at this point in time is a, is is going to factor in because we're doing it on purpose. And now we'll go ahead and get our block, our 3D effect happening. We will be working from the right and the bottom, okay? I keep saying I'm gonna add some audio as far as background music goes and all that, but that's something that requires a whole bunch of setup and things to look into that is not really my strength. But the reason why I wanted the background music was to get rid of the pauses or something in between the pauses. But we will get fancy later on. Right now, I'm just enjoying the sounds of my son playing his switch. So basically, um, yeah, we got our little our little 3D effect happening right here. You know, I could really get technical about it, but I'm not going to. 
And then we're going to create a halo around this so that way we have some more separation from the text from when we're going to do our doodles. So I've been doing a curved halo, I believe. Let's confirm that. Well, that was a jagged and that was a cloudy. So I've been following the style of, of what we did right here. So if I were to do the halo around it, which is kind of like a sticker, you know, border, I would also basically kind of follow this. And there we go. One more word knocked out. So, okay. All right. We still got one, two, three, four, four of these to go, five, six, seven, and then the letter itself. And keep in mind, it's not just the A. We're doing A. We're doing D. We're doing H. We're doing no A, D, H, D. We're doing D. And the whole point is that we're going to do sets of all four letters, which would create four books for that set or four prints for that set. And then when somebody comes up to the table, like let's say I'm at a zine fest or something like that, and somebody is not really interested in the books, they don't really want to hear me whine or anything like that, that's fine. They got their own problems, I understand. Then what the least they can do is that if they have an affinity or they feel like they connect with you know, they have their own diagnosis, they could pick out any type of the tiles or postcards that they want and mix and match and come up with their own you know, four letters and go home happy. So that's kind of like what it is. It's meant to be functional, versatile as well as also expressive, at least from my point of view. And that's just me communicating, you know, my diagnosis and my journey and how I'm navigating through it. So, okay. So now that we've done that, should we go for one of the harder ones, which would be like right here, this um, elegant? Or you look at your mom. Okay. So right here is supposed to be cursive almost, right? So I'm going to go around it. Okay. And then I originally did capitals, but do I want to do capitals? I guess so. We'll just do this. And then, you know, I can erase what doesn't work later on. because this will be inked, so I can go ahead and erase that later on. Now I have to make up some of the gaps and weight. There we go. And honestly, it feels like I'm actually creating my own font or my own text um, as, as I literally try and shore up some of these gaps. And then when I get to the inking stage, I'll definitely start playing with the line weights and things of that nature. Okay, so we have a tension here. And then again, we're gonna go get rid of all of this, or maybe we leave some of the inner line here and it kind of like pulls off a neon effect later on. I won't, I won't know that until I jump in and start messing with it and at least ink the outline contour. Hey, Yvette, how you doing? My friend Yvette is online. Yvette was one of the people that helped me get across the finish line with my first major, major anthology, independent anthology called Band 2, which was like 60 different creative people, 400 plus pages. And then Yvette also helped me with my first print, my, whole, my first business cards. And Yvette and her partner are, um, are opening up a new um, printing uh, Lone Crow. So, Yvette, please feel free to drop that link to your your um your new place, um, in the chat because I know you all have an opening happening soon in August. So, but um, I love the name. I love the sound. I love what they're trying to you know do for around the community and locally. So, um, sounds like exciting stuff. So I'm happy for them. But, all right. So we have attention here. I don't know if I want to do 3D on this one because it's already very compl complicated, as you can see right here. So maybe we'll just go with the halo, but give it enough room. Okay. 
Yeah, we'll give it enough room in case I change my mind, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do too much of a 3D effect on here. Maybe I'll change my mind and do a drop shadow later on once I clean all this up and see if, if it's worth it. But um, we might just do some reflective, you know, reflection on top of the lettering style itself to give us some more of a 3D effect and render effect. Lone Crow printing. Yes. Do you have a link? Put that link in there if you have it, Yvette. So... But, okay, we've got another one. So now we're down to one, two left on this side. One, two. Oh, another. Oh, look at that. That one's a little bit more together because I didn't use capital letters. Do you see how this one is connecting a lot more, um, I would say, more fluid? So I'm going to go ahead and do this one since we're already on this curve um, attempt. So let's see if we can go ahead and maybe have some better success. This already feels more natural because I can just play with the bottom um, line of the text. I had to make stuff up right there. Maybe I spoke too soon. No, nah, I think we're okay still. We're still okay. We can make this happen. And, you know, one of the things I need to confront and be aware of and constantly push back on is this imposter syndrome where it feels like you're not allowed to create or you're not good enough to produce work because... I don't know about you, but I've let that hold me back many, many years. And at the end of the day, this is what I like to do. So I'm tired of not um, leaning into that. So, okay, this one we can do 3D on. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do it from the right again. And I'm already digging it, you know, from the right into the bottom. If it doesn't completely follow the character, oh, well, who cares? We're going to fake it as we make it. I think there's a difference between fake it as you make it and fake it till you make it because I feel like I've been faking it till I make it for quite some time to the point where I didn't make anything. And then like it wouldn't exist unless I made it. And me sitting around wishing for that to happen. Oh, look, I've turned that mistake into a, a plus. You know, it's not doing me any good and not doing anyone else any good. So we're just going to go ahead and continue to do this art thing works and all. Because what's my philosophy? My philosophy is that anyone can create artwork. Anyone has the right to create and produce work, no matter what level or skill or training you have. You know, and I think I'm okay with that, you know. So Marie says, sometimes it's so hard to put yourself out there creatively when things don't feel perfect enough. Well, the process to getting to something you're happy with is at least as important as the end product. And that's true. I mean, you know, let's not deny that there's validity in that, that, you know, that there's a certain end goal you want to achieve with the piece that you're working on or an aesthetic or something that you see, you visualize in here or that you've seen someone else do. And you're kind of have that person's aesthetic or style in mind or the way it should look. But then maybe when you try to do it and apply it, it doesn't come out that way, whether that be because you're, your level isn't up to that, or maybe it's because you have a whole completely different aesthetic um, than that person. And, you know, then that could be somewhat discouraging. And I think learning to embrace those differences and then learning, if you want to sit there and analyze why it didn't measure up to that other person's aesthetic or to the same look, then you can do that. I think it's, it's healthy to analyze it. But what I think we need to do is stop, um, stop getting lost in the comparison and, and letting that discourage us. So if we want to compare and analytically break down, okay, you know what? That person maybe holds their pencil or pen differently in a sense where they're using less pressure and they're a little bit more fluid with the strokes or something, or that person, um, you know, has had 20, 30 years on me when it comes to that. I mean, you know, just there's things to take into account when comparison. And so at the end of the day, sometimes like I find myself, what I call chasing the unicorn, chasing other aesthetics, other 
things I want to do and I get distracted with it. And when, and then I leave my own aesthetic, my own signature style behind. And, and I also sometimes have, I'm guilty of hating my own style and hating the way things look when I do it. And it isn't until recently that I went back and started drawing those gnomes in my old rendering way that I used to, that I was like, you know what? I kind of miss this. This feels natural to me. This feels right to me. And then, the, and then I got a little bit of a pop from it. People actually enjoyed it, you know? So, um, so yeah, I do chase a lot of um, YouTubers, YouTuber artists who have more elegant styles or more of the YA, you know, like, like cute girl type of look to them and everything like that, or the more minimalist, you know, approach. But at the end of the day, that's not really my wheelhouse. This is more my wheelhouse, you know? And, um, and leaning more into this, embracing what I am right now with this feels good. And this is for me. This is how I'm going to interpret my, navi my, navigate my diagnosis. And trying to do it through the lens of somebody else doesn't really make sense in the context of exploring what does ADHD and neurodiversity mean to me, right? So, I mean, yeah. So let's, um, you know, if we're worried about imposter syndrome, let's just not be an imposter to ourselves. So... All right. Um, thank you, Yvette. Yvette says, um, you know, they like my style and I appreciate that. So, and I like your style, Yvette, you know, um, I miss when you're crafting and I hope that you get to a place where you can finally go back to making the things that you enjoy making because you're so knowledgeable. You have such a wide knowledge base and, you know, I think, um, you know, Columbus and the world you know, needs your work out there and you're a damn good editor too. So, okay, let's go ahead and do a halo around here just to give ourselves some breathing room when it comes to the tangle or the watercolor. I also will, in the sake of preserving some of the um, stages of production here, also take a photo or two with the iPad or with my phone. And that way I can bring it into Procreate or onto the iPad and play around with it too. So I am giving myself a little bit of a safety net and that's okay, I think, because then, you know, there's still more discovery to happen by going digital as well as analog. So we're not going to be complete purists here. Now, obviously I've layered over here, but I kind of like that. I kind of like this little convergence here. So it's kind of peeking out and, you know, a little bit of conflict right now, right here, I think is justified when you consider what does this diagnosis bring with the person you know, how many times does a neurodiverse person come into conflict with the neurotypical world where they don't fit in? And that's been kind of like the struggle, right, is trying to navigate and fit in to what's considered normal, you know. Um, and, you know, there's no allowance for you to be you or for you to explore or take things at your pace. And I find myself guilty of that as well, whether it be something that I'm trying to fit myself into or whether it be maybe my children who probably have the same issues I do and that I'm trying to hold them to accountable for something that, that that I can't even maybe meet. So that doesn't make sense. So so I think we got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of conversations to have as as a whole. And we have a lot of grace to be extending to to ourselves and people like us. So I don't know if I ever go back to teaching. I know I'm definitely gonna have a whole different understanding and appreciation and hopefully patience for those students who also have to deal with that type of type, type of um, wiring and those type of struggles. So, and no, I would completely redo my curriculum in a sense where my curriculum is more of a, of, of is not so strict. It's, it's, it's meant to be for them to go at their own pace and for them to have the self-discovery. I'd rather them have a discovery of self and art in the medium and have small little wins and milestones and for them to just complete the task and then hate the task and not have anything that they're proud of afterwards. So, all right. Um, I do stand on my soapbox a lot, by the way. So just, just be aware, that's what we do here. We don't shy away from that, we lean into it. All right, so aggressive, aggressive. Okay. I'm going to do that juxtaposed thing. I'm going to take this aggressive and I'm going to do bubble letters with it, like, like bubble gum type of thing. All right. So it's almost like I'm starting with the halo first, and I kind of am.
That was tricky. S's are tricky. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to do here? Holy crud. I don't even know if I did it right. That was tricky. That That's that's hard. <laughs> wow. And I know there's a trick for it, but I, it's just not coming to mind right now. So let's just come over here for a little bit. Yeah, we're going to run away from the S. <laughs> Okay, let's connect that right there. Let's connect that right there. <laughs> I am okay. I had to I had to tap out a little bit there. You saw how hard that was. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Lines are just happening. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so Marie says it would be so good if educators learn um, were able to learn about neurodivergence as well. The problems start for kids at a young age, and the teachers understand more about the different way people, kids learn, have a little bit of patience. It would mean a lot. I fully 100% agree. Also, um, having been in the system, also, unfortunately, education as a whole is underfunded, not appreciated, and there is an, a literal attack out there right now to take down education as we know it so that way um they can institute for profit schools and control control the education control the curriculum control what control facts history things that you learn things that you could learn and so when education or something is being attacked from all sides and being stripped away and undermined unfortunately the people that really need it like those kids and the and and and, and ieps and things of that nature fall even further into the cracks not to mention just a regular baseline of, of, of quality and equitable treatment for just students and staff. So, so, so I got a racist person yelling on my um on my what do you call that? So you are. I'm not gonna put you in time. I'm just gonna block you because you are. You have failed this chat. And probably filled your city too. Goodbye. All right. So moving on. Let me get, get a, a sip of coffee. So every time a, a Nazi racist jumps into my chat, I'm going to drink a thing of coffee. Yeah. So that person put every horrible slur they could in their name. That person has anger issues and probably needs a hug. And whoever you are, I don't think you're angry at me. You want want to blame me and people of the slurs that you've named. But honestly, I think you need to look in the mirror to get it clear. So, huh, it just all happens we're doing aggressive. And what was that? That was an aggressive person, right? Right. So, okay. Let's go ahead and um, finish up with this aggressive. Like, we just had somebody model that for us. So. Um, where am I at? That's happening, Marie. That's happening um, pretty much everywhere, but especially within like um, like 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 red states and all that. So, um, they um, basically when you see the CRT word, like you know, and then the banning of books and that nature, like even comics and sequential art, um, that's that's where it starts. And then, and then, um, but think like again, education and and arts and humanities has been something that's been constantly underfunded and constantly stripped when certain you know parties are in the house and in in control um you know somebody feel free to go look that up if you don't believe me i will keep drawing and now we can fake our little 3d right here and it was really polarizing because i originally was is from a, a more um you know liberal state and then coming in the past 10 years, maybe living in states that are more controlled by conservative, um, you know, means or cities that are controlled by that. And it's, it's a little bit, it's a little stark, of like a stark reality for me personally, but, and then going back recently to the Bay Area in California to do some other um, degree stuff and comic things. And I was just like, wow, you know, <clears throat> but I definitely think that 
education isn't one of those things that should be for profit because um, it's um, trying to make more cogs to use in the machine is not how you should be treating people. Quality of life, the pursuit of happiness, you know, innovation, ideas, things that can reach um, and us take us to new plateaus, you know, is is what is what I think should be the mission, you know, not just seeing, well, it's just business. Business is some weird entity with like with like this these hands and fingers, like 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 into people's like brains or or souls, and saying, hey, you, ha it's just business. Just take this line down and just work and make my CEO millions of dollars and then die. Um, you know, that's just, um, that's not, that's not something that we should be, um, you know, all lining up to do. So. If you've ever stopped and thought for a second, is this all there is to things then and that's that that's that intuition that's that voice telling you that, that something's not right so. yeah um so so canada's not too far off there's definitely a divide between li liberals and conservatives here too education struggles as well as this yeah i was wanting to like maybe like scapegoat out to canada then i hear that it's got its fair share of problems as well and that it's hard to get into that state uh, the country anyway so so I guess we'll just have to, you know, deal with it here. But um, as far as um, other people that are dealing with it. So, yeah, Yvette says they're struggling with that currently. And Yvette, you're not alone. It may feel that you're isolated and alone, but there is a great many of us that are dealing with that on some level or at certain peak times. And I don't say that to say, hey, get over it. And we're all dealing with it, too. Um, I say that to to say that that um that that is, is um that's my that's my um that's my evidence of it being widespread that that that, that this is not right and they're doing that that's you know so I mean you know empathy needs to be empathy should be something that's that's not looked down upon or or looked or pissed on it should be something that's embraced and utilized and say is this empathetic does this does this like help people or is this going to hurt a lot of people and i think if people and politicians and you know were to go from that and be the still the servants and and come to service of that you know hold on hey i'm streaming and you're making a bunch of racket when you're rich and famous i'm going to come up there and i'm going to sabotage your stream mister I'm sorry. It's just that Oreo was scratching me, so I let mom take her. Okay, so to be fair, he's right. We've got a diva of a husky, and whatever the diva wants, the diva tries and get. So I won't tell you what she what she hit um, earlier. So yeah. So but, I'm gonna go outside. Before. Okay. Yes, huskies. Yeah, I, I I posted a photo on my Instagram of of her basically kicking me off the bed out of my spot. I was gone for 11 days and so she took over my spot and like and then sometimes she'll take my seat too and just look at me like what <laughs> so all right so yeah um i've been talking and we've got one uh word left to do and that's anxiety so um the anxiety that we all feel you know i mean the anxiety that we all feel is very real you know it is palpable you saw I just kind of mumbled that word. I wasn't sure if I was seeing it right, but um, it's legit. It's 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 not um it's not made up. You know, it's it's legit. You know, like like when people start going to the dark side and start being all racist and crazy and, and angry and wanting to point fingers at people, you got to wonder like what are they worried about? What happened to make them feel that way? And I think we mostly know what happened. You know, and I feel bad for them in the sense that that, you know, I'm not your enemy. I'm not trying to take anything away from you. You know, if anything, I'm trying to like, like vote and work towards like a future that does include you. And you don't have to be angry or suffer like anyone else. Like, like, I don't want that for anybody. You know what I mean? So do I want certain people to be accountable? Oh yes, most definitely. But, um, So lashing out at people or at groups just because you feel like 
they've taken something from you or they are taking something from you. I really think you need to look at the proper, you know, at the proper um, sources and the proper um, entities that are actually taking stuff away from you. Huh. That's funny, Wendy. I was about to get, we, we wanted to get a pool because they're hyper, hypoallergenic and have allergies, but um, our, our, um, our husky just showed up one day, you know, the day after my mom passed and she showed up at my door and, you know, how can you argue with that? So, and we did our due diligence and did try to find um, the owner and two weeks went by and, and the, uh, I don't want to say um, dog pound, I can't recall what they're called, but they said, well, she's basically yours, you know, so, and so we did all the, all the stuff, all the tagging and all that. And, and now we have our fourth child. I, I always wanted a fourth kid, but it's not my call. It's my wife's call. Obviously it's her body. Um, and so, um, you know, now that we have our, our Husky, we've got our fourth and I think we're good. Okay. So anxiety. So I normally would put these like little like shaky things on there, but they never look good by the time I'm done inking them or, or, um, so I think I'm just going to do like, I'm just going to do a frantic halo around it, you know, cause I think that's more like, um, that can still convey the anxious of this line, the shaky line. And why else are people do have anxiety? What, what else brings anxiety? Um, not having a foundation, not having, a, not having, having your, or having your foundation shaken and pulled out from underneath you. You know, I definitely can, can sympathize and uh, relate to that. Having what you think is solid ground and, it's, and just uprooted and, and messed and, and all of a sudden what you know, or what you thought was true or what you can reflect on, you know? Um, so Ah, okay. So you know, can um can definitely you know cause a lot of anxiety, and then start pe start having people lashing out, at, and probably at the wrong people. So, and if you had self medication or any other type of external you know pressure and forces until it really can destabilize somebody to the point where they're maybe doing something, and um doing something that they shouldn't be doing or lashing out at people, you know that that aren't actually the problem. So, or that could possibly maybe try to help them. So. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and um, talk a little bit about art. So um, Ethan mentioned, um, yeah, in the past I've mentioned my heavy handedness, and that was pretty much evident right here as I was working on these letter forms. In fact, look how look look at the pencil. The pencil is grinded already to you know. So um, there's a lot of coming in and out. So I apologize for that. But um, but yeah, so heavy handedness in one of my earlier streams, and I've got the same problem probably because of anxiety. So have I seen Cynic's video on drawing tempo? I don't recall if I've seen it. Sometimes I may have seen it on YouTube or whatever, if, if it's on there, and seen a link somewhere and not know the person's name or not remember the person's name because I have a bad memory when it comes to stuff like that. And, um, and brain fog is a real deal with me. But um, I know there are other techniques or other things that one can do to try and alleviate that heavy headness. But also, I'm also dealing with that torn bicep, which causes other issues and fatigue in my arm. Um, I finally went to physical therapy and they're giving me some small exercises that make me look like I'm doing the robot break dancing and pop and locking. So, but um, Ethan, I believe we're also associated in another form or another discord. So um, by all means, drop that in one of the resources if that's the case. And I'll go and um, try to circle around and look that up because I'd, I'd love to check it out again, you know, even as a refresher. So thank you for mentioning it, Ethan. But um, yes, thank you, Marie. Yeah, she found her forever home with us. So um, um, love her, love the diva, love the husky, you know, Ori. I want to do a comic about it, about her. So so I, I take photos and try to sneak like little photos of her. But then if she sees me holding the camera too long, she'll look up and and not pose. So, and, and disagree. But right now she's trying to get back outside. So but my coffee is cold. That's the problem with me. I guess, you know, only one racist person. So I guess I'll just drink the coffee now. All right, so you know, um, as you can see, we pretty much have already like filled the rest of these um, letter forms out on this side. How many more do we have to do? I've got so much wires and stuff right here. This isn't supposed to be my permanent studio space. Technically, it's supposed to be downstairs, but there is an awful mess, and I just 
it's been hard to try and deal deal with that mess. So I moved up here for a little bit. Arresting. So arresting, yes, I could find arresting. Um, arresting, I find myself, you know, in an arresting state. Things that are just and specifically when it comes to trying to clean the studio and organize the studio downstairs, especially after my mom passed. It was like the the bottlenecking and the anxiety and the depression as well as just the the focus got way worse. And I thought I had a moment of clarity to try and like, you know, not waste, you know, like feel like if she passed, it's up to me to live up to a certain expectation, but I didn't give myself any time to grieve. And I think it started, you know, coming out in other ways and, and causing another type of psychosis or other things that are happening. And the ADHD is definitely something that, that got worse as, as I went on. And, um, and I even had paid for a few classes, like for how to film stuff, so I could get filming figured out and editing, as well as like um, certain painting classes, all that. And unfortunately, I had to drop them all, and all this went to waste. So, so this is me going slow and steady, and just trying to get a couple streams going a week, and build up a nice habit of being producing work, using me hanging out with all of you as a um, as a as a framework or oops, a little bit of structure so I can get some things done. And then hopefully I can build upon that. And and um, hopefully, if you know, if, if you need to work, you're also working on stuff while we're chatting here and everything. But um, I've got one, two, three left to do. I think I should, I'm going to leave that one for later. I kind of like the way that looks with the, with the little tile things. I might, I'm going to think on that one. Arresting, awkward. So I've got so the other thing here, you know, to get into teacher mode is do we have enough balance? We've got this jagged blockiness. We've got this more fluid, um, like almost like a neon sign type of deal going right here with, with the cursive, you know. And then as we move forward, are we going to have enough balance here, tension between the more elegant lines or curved lines and the more abrupt, aggressive lines, the more angular lines? So um, also let's look over here. Did I have enough balance? So most of these are around the same thickness, I would say, and there's only one cursive thing. And so it looks kind of all aggressive to me, all kind of bold. So maybe that's something I think about when it comes to the tangling part. And maybe I use more finesse, try to use more finesse, or try to use more elegant curvature um, patterns when I do this. So that way um, it gives a juxtaposition that I might be looking for. Or maybe it all just looks like aggressive and aggro and that's just how it is um you know and that'll be fun to try and we'll find out and you know what i'm not going to stress it i'm not going to worry about it it'll be what it's going to be so at the very least if i don't get to the aesthetic or to that goal that i want to get to i want to at least learn along the way so so let me read what ethan wrote here um yeah yeah, thank you. Thank you for the well wishes on the biceps, even. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to go and work out and get rid of this pre-diabetes thing that keeps messing me up. Like the past few days, like my sugar levels have been like, Ugh. so, um, but um, yeah, so um, thank you for the link to that video. I'll check it out. So anyways, um, as always, everything that you do, every decision that you make is not just a decision of of aesthetics is also a decision of storytelling. I believe storytelling is in everything that we do when it comes to applic application of art and, and design. So I'm going to move this coffee back over here. So. And the thing about these pencils, I really like these Stedler pencils, these HB2 pencils. So I can just grab another one right now. That's sharp. I hope this is in frame. Is this in frame? Good. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and do our resting. Arresting normally might be a big type of thing, right? Um, arresting, what is arresting? Arresting is to withhold, to stop you from doing something, right? Arresting puts, causes you pause, it, it prevents, right? So we have this smaller text though that's that's arresting. And I think some some irony in that is that it's small but it's arresting, it's stopping me. And, and as someone who is neurodivergent, if you, um, we were just talking about this on Twitter with with, with um, Hello Alice and some other people that um, something small, something that, that other people might take for granted, like getting in the shower or doing some type of chore, um, could stop you and your tracks and just there's like a field around you, as I call the bubble. 
So it could be something small, some doubt, some seed that's just causing you not to take care of something that you, you know other people could easily take care of. And so it it seems to me like it makes sense that this arrest might be a little bit smaller because it's always something that you can't that's not as tangible. You don't know what it is, but it's definitely causing all movement to stop. So I'm gonna keep this because this was supposed to be my midline, but it just so happened to make a dollar sign. And I kind of think that that also could fit the theme of arresting. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and embrace the thinness of this font and the separation of these letters. I was connecting everything. So if it looks a little funky, that's really fine to me. And, and unfortunately we are in a society that your value is is supposedly determined by how much money you have or what you have to show for it. Okay, so it's not fancy. It's not it's not you know butacious. I just made that word up, I think. Um, but it is, you know, it is there. So let's go ahead and I wonder if I should go ahead and lean it the other way. I've been doing everything from the right side. What would happen if we just flipped it and did our 3D effect, our drop shadow from this side, from the left side? So let's go ahead and try that. It feels a little awkward, but it's kind of fun to do. See it right here is where the background music would like um, kick in. I don't even know what the hell that is right there, by the way. <laughs> and account for this awkward pause that I have with the, um, as I start to, you know. And I should note that on days when we're doing more mindful doodling and stuff like this, there are going to be times where we're just going to breathe. Breathe as we, as we ink, like especially when we start inking. You know, we're going to probably do a little bit more breathing and control breathing as we tangle and, and all that and try to get to, like, some type of point of serenity. I actually kind of like that. It's very awkward, you know, but um, it's a little unhinged, but I'm okay with that. And so look at this. I just feel like doing this. I love the torn look. I think I'm just stuck in the grunge years. I think I'm just stuck in in that skate or die like 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 aesthetic or whatever. I mean, you take the boy out of Cali, we can't take the Cali out of the boy, I guess. All right, moving on. Wait a minute, did I do awkward twice? Holy crap! How did I not see that? No, no, I did awful. Okay, wait, did I do awkward twice? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Awful and awkward. Woo! Okay. I don't know. I don't trust myself sometimes. I don't trust myself lots of times. Okay. So, awkward. Let's see. How are we going to do awkward? How about a little pirate? It's funny because now I'm just loosening up and I just don't kind of just don't care. Like, if it's, you know, whatever. It kind of reminds me of the Wolverine comic font in a way. It's all jagged and clawy and stuff like that. So this is just going to be a little clawy. Let's do that. It's like an animal tooth. There we go. Okay, I'm okay with it. So now I really enjoyed the 3D or drop shadow coming from the left on this last one, but I think we're gonna have too much crossover right here because we already have it right here. Then I'll be getting attacked from both ends, which would create a lot of tension, but also a lot of confusion. And I don't know if I want a person's eye to do too much work when they're already gonna have to, <clears throat> sorry. Um, look at um, the patterning and all that. So I might ease up and go ahead and do it from the right again. To 
be quite honest, I really kind of enjoy streaming around this time as opposed to like um, early in the mornings or earlier. So if you would like me to do like an extra stream on Thursdays around this time, like evening time, um, let me know. I would I would probably, you know, wouldn't mind doing that. It's more closer to the hours that I'm more awake and aware as opposed to like 11 in the morning where I'm just like still trying to wake up and, and exist and everyone's mowing their lawn and stuff like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to... Here's what I'm going to do. I have an idea. So I told you I kind of like these tile things, right? Kind of reminds me of like... So we're going to actually lean into that a little bit. And then we'll probably use a, an ink stroke or, you know, to kind of... And then we're going to do our letters in between these these things. So app breathe. So this will be a lot thinner than what we're used to, or what you see me do on here. But I think that's because I kind of want this um. I'm going to add some angular stuff and some booger style, like, like in some splatter right here. I call it booger style, but I always kind of affectionately refer to my homie Dave DeGrand's work as that because I, I love how it is. It reminds me of like Nickelodeon and, and Double Dare and, and stuff like that. So, so this is like a little bit gooey and splatter. So the thickness and all the boldness, um, I'm in um, East Coast time, uh, <clears throat> yeah, EST, Marie, as far as the time zone goes, is, <clears throat> emphasized, I got a frog in my voice, <clears throat> <clears throat> is emphasized on our border as opposed to the letter forms themselves. Uh, let me go ahead and drink some water real quick. All right, everything is done right there. Okay, we have a decision to make. I have my letter. My, this will be the cover of, of this book, right? I could either use it as a cutout and tangle and design stuff inside, and then as well as, or I can like make it like a shadow box kind of deal rather than doing a 3D effect on it. So, okay, let's do a 3D effect, but we're going to go interior instead of exterior. So here's what I mean by that. So later on, I'm going to put these lines in there just to kind of give you an idea of what I mean. If I can pull it off, if I'm a little bit more coherent when that when that time comes, it'll be like as if we are doing the inside of this, and then this is opening up into another world. And that's what we're going to try and shoot for. We'll see if it happens. I don't know yet because um, I kind of have to just kind of play it by ear and feel when I go there. But um, and then this, of course, will be all patterned and tangled out, like and everything like that. So, so I might do more of an illustration right here. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting this weird Terminator. I think because we've been talking about some gloom and doom, and and the way the world is. Yeah, I kind of feel like the city in decay is happening inside this window, and. And when you're not sure of your home, the city, your area, the country, the world that you live in, I think all these emotions are definitely real things that come about. So I think I've got my theme for this figured out. 
we're going to put that aside for now. You can tell that I'm avoiding inking still. <laughs> so the next one we would have to do would be the letter D. And I haven't put my 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 words in yet. I haven't written down, so I know what words I'm going to do, but I haven't yet done all this composition stuff and wrote the letters down. I'd have to find my notebook that has all that stuff in it, and that's way over there. Uh, and I'm not getting up there right now. So ADHD. Okay, so this one is this volume. That is a whole book set. I haven't decided if I'm going to print them on canvas paper or thick quality paper. So <laughs> inking does give anxiety. Yeah, it's funny because some because I, I really feel calm when I watch somebody else ink and they have videos of them inking. I feel like it's one of the most calmest things, you know, really serene and everything like that. Um, but then when I'm inking, it's like this is the opposite. It's like, oh, crap, here we go. <laughs> you know, don't mess up. Ah, messed up. You know, so it feels like I'm trying to drive, you know, on, on like ice. So, yeah. My neighbors have these two little dogs and they're constantly barking and yapping. So let's see what else we have here. I believe this is the first cover. Do I have the H? Because this is going to be, yes, I do. Okay. So A, D, H, D. And as you can see, this one right here, bring it up to here has that cutout look where there's something happening in the background. It's more like mountain vistas. Like, like in this one, I think I did try to go for somewhat serenity, uh, calmness, like, like a landscape and, and just kind of like a nature botanical thing. Um, this one right here is, I can tell you right now, I already know this, the, the theme for that. And I'm putting, I started putting together the Pinterest board, the mood board for it, but this is basically, um, thank you so much, Marie. Um, Nuri said it was lovely. This is Death Valley, basically. So, or like, you know, all the D letters that, that go with that. So, now um, I'm going to laugh if this was meant for those. I can't remember now because I, I did like, like 24 different types of sets of books. It was crazy. So, um, yeah. So, I've got a lot. Like, I honestly am probably sitting on like 20, 24 different concepts and comics when it comes to this whole ADHD thing. It was just like, like, like like a, like a blast went off in my head and, and I couldn't stop like thinking about this stuff and I just kept going kept going so um you know that was the inspiration for that it was like well if I have to deal with this stuff then let me make it work for me and so let's see if we have I think yeah okay there we go so this is this set. Uh, how does that go right here? I'm trying to put it this way. I really like it more in a linear fashion, but right now it's just this for the sake of you all being able to see it in the frame. So is that in my phone? But normally I would like to have it like right that, but I'd have to start messing with the cameras and everything. I don't want to do that yet. So yeah, so this one's pretty much ready to go, ready to ink. But again, we have to come across that color thing of whether or not we're going to... um um, do watercolor first or, or ink or whatever. So I'm going to do a little bit more research and swatching when it comes to that, and then I'll make a decision on on um, what we're going to do with that. So, But I know this is one's almost ready to go as far as a print set. I think this will probably just be more of a postcard print set. I don't know. I'm debating on whether or not to make the covers that are obviously covers, uh, but also maybe make them all prints and postcards, and then still still utilize them for covers as well. So that way, if you don't want the the book, you can still get the, the cover. So um, here's the other one again. These this one was fun. So. And that would be a second set. So I guess. I have some decisions to make because I have zine fests and shows coming up really soon and I need to decide what am I going to do for product as well as for what am I going to have on my table? And this has been the, 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 the thing I've been most focused on. You know, it's oddly weird that I'm hyper-focused on doing ADHD zines, comics and advocacy, things of that nature. Cause as I, as I learn more about all this stuff, it's just like, God, so many things are clear in my, in my past and everything. 
and my relationships with other people, peers and professional in industry. It's like, I feel like I've shot myself in the foot like multiple times because of this, of this issue. So yeah. yeah, it's a very active household tonight with the door opening. So, okay. So basically I have one, two, maybe three, maybe four sets. So how many is enough to go ahead and go to, um, uh, print on. I also wanted to do some round covers, but I might just do a whole different set of um, round ones instead. This, I believe, was the set that was going to originally go. Was supposed to be every other one was a curve thing. So um, I don't know. I might. Mm. Maybe I'll, I don't know. I'll think on this one. This was supposed to be a set. It's supposed to go A, D, H, D. The circles mostly fit inside there. but So this one's I'm still trying to think about. Maybe what I should do is just see what story fits in with this. So, uh, Or maybe I should maybe mess with gouache paint on this one. I've got to find the other the other um cir I ordered more of those those circular um, templates. So and then we have these actual postcard size ones because they're toned paper. I wanted to um really have some fun with them and maybe you know see what the color looks like you know like the saturation all that on these. So um yeah. I'm still debating on whether or not to turn the tiles and make them fit onto like a postcard size. So that way all the tiles are the same, like it all fits right there and I can put some other type of, um, you know, embellishments or whatever on that. So that way they all match up and people can sit there and mix and match and make their own sets. So I have to, that's what I'll play around with once I scan it. Um, I played around with just different titles and stuff like that, small prints. Because I was calling my comic at the time a, a, a damn hard day. So that's a word. That stood, you know, it's an acronym. And still, you know, trying to play with the title, a damn hard day. Yeah. And again, so, so you can see these like title sequences. So I'll have to get my graphic design going on that one. So that's where we're at with what we've got so far. I'm at a little bit over an hour and 15 minutes or about to hit an hour and 15 minutes. So I don't think I'm ready to work in the iPad yet. I'm still, my hand's a little shaking and I got to remember the story that I was doing for that. Don't know if I want to ink yet. Sometimes should I go back into our doodle book and start playing around with that? Do another doodle. Not ready to ink that yet, but am I ready to go ahead and move on to a D? Where's my other bookmark? There it is. A D H D. These things don't stay. I'd have to actually glue them in, so. You know what? Let's not give up on these yet. Let's 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 make something happen for this. Marie, you're totally right. Things do make so much more sense with the right diagnosis. And between fibromyalgia, ADHD, and, and other things, it's been quite the the roller coaster trying to find out what exactly is wrong. You know, besides obviously my my horrible eating habits and things of that nature. So. All right, so if I were just to go ahead and look at this one and start coming up with um, we could start with a um, I can just now if Ethan was still here, I could sit there and and show Ethan that I'm now I'm I'm actually holding the pencil at length. 
back and just kind of letting it glide and do whatever it's going to do. So we have these cracks that I'm doing. And I think what's going to happen is that these cracks will be bold, more bolder, and will tangle in between these spaces. Or do I want to tangle, or do I want to draw more of an illustration? So I don't know yet. I haven't decided yet. There is one exercise I can't wait to do with you all on Monday that I'm going to show. And it's specifically, I can't talk, specifically for people who might be finding themselves stuck. If you're art stuck, this is something that, or if you're new to art and you still want to create something, but you're not sure what to do, this is something that I had my students, my, my middle schoolers when I taught um, do. So, okay. All right, so already, just by doing this, I'm already digging the composition, the design. Now I'm going to go ahead and figure out what's going to happen in between all this stuff right now. Maybe I go ahead and make, maybe we're, what we do is we play with depth, depth of field, like in layers. Like, you know, we keep creating things that create another layer, another layer, another layer. So like right here, for example, what if this inside the A... Okay, so I'm going to lightly do this. What if this was like an eye, like an eyeball? You know what I mean? I'm, in my brain right now, I'm seeing Charles Burns, but I know I can't do Charles Burns. I know that guy, that artist is, you know what I mean? But I love the design. Of, I love Charles Burns' work. So, And what's funny is that this A is already taking up the eyeball, the 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 arrow right here. So this would be right here. This slash would be right here. The iris would be like right here. Put a little bit of... Okay, the eyelid would be right here. And I kind of, this will be somewhat of a design, cart, more of a cartoon. Not, it's not meant to be a realistic eye. It's meant to be like an illustrative eye. So, okay. And then we got the lash right here, right there. We have the crease right here. And then maybe the part of an eyebrow. And now we're going to go ahead. I think this will mess up. Watch. Oh, no. It's, okay. The erasing's good on this on this paper stock. I thought I was just going to make one big, nice, not nice, but horrible, blurry mess. But no, we're good. Okay. Let's go ahead and erase the interior of the eye, of the A, excuse me, and see what happens. Let's see what, what we have as far as the cutout effect goes. Okay, so we've got this happening right here. And we've got this. I got to erase that. All right, so this is a little confusing. I might have to clear that up in inking because it, it kind of went in between here and then. And so I'll worry about that later on. But basically, we've got the inside of the A. It's a cutout. Something's happening inside that world of the A. We've got um, cracks or bolts of lightning or whatever you want to call it happening on the around the A. And then we're going to do stuff inside in each one as well. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't really try to, you know, mess with that kind of stuff, you know, the, the, you know, the Illuminati and all that, but, but I guess maybe, um, subconsciously, yeah, may, maybe they got some control over me. I, I, I doubt it, but okay. Now I got to start thinking about what am I going to put in and around here? So 
Do I want to do a tangle? Do I want to do more drawing, more illustrative stuff? Do I want to do like like body parts, like features? You know what I mean? So if I was smart and I was going to do like body parts or like different facial features around here, I would have had a Pinterest board ready to go or a mood board with, with portraits and face, T, like a T faces. So that way I could have um, really like took advantage of that. So maybe I'll put that one on the back burner, that idea on the back burner, and maybe we'll just go ahead and tangle because, you know, um, that's what we've been talking about all this time anyways, right? So. Uh, so now we got a little sunset. How about a little boat? Oh, I said I was entangled. Now I'm drawing. <laughs> bit of clouds I'm gonna darken this a little bit more so I can separate what I'm doing okay and so this will be like probably Darker waves, highlights. I'll leave the sky clear and we'll darken the clouds a little bit. And we're going to darken the sun or moon or whatever it is. I don't know if yet if I'll do like lines right here because I might be way too busy and might, might just give it some space to breathe by going ahead and leaving this, the sky to be um where our space is at, our open space, since the, wa the water will have a lot of um, texture and, and, and value playing around in it. All right, so right there, we've already got like like, like vignette you know, happening right here. So we've got that. Um, and is there a theme connecting this yet? No, um, other than me wanting just to play around with just this, you know, these different little windows and stuff. I really want to draw a mouth here, <laughs> but um, I don't know what I want to do right here. I'm going to come back to that corner. And who's to say that, if, well, unless we're on the deadline, obviously, but who's to say that you have to do it all in one sitting? You could come back and add something different each each day, you know, and just, just be like, you know, something that you just do for for five minutes and then you're like, Hey, you know what? I got something accomplished today, you know, and, and move on. Maybe this helps unlock certain things. I, I don't know. But, um, what I do know is that it does not have to be, you know, full pressure. So. Okay. I'm going to do a cactus right here. I don't really know how that flower looks, so I'm just kind of making it up. But what I like about this is that these old little prune lines or that they do in The Simpsons might be a little bit fun to do. This pencil is getting dull. I think I switched out the wrong pencil. There we go. That's more like it. And again, when I go to the inking stages, I'll clean this up a little bit. We're going to do the shadow. And maybe this is the different. A little bit of hatching right here. I think this will go dark. And then we'll do stars. So it'll be more like a desert sky. And then an illumination right here. Very messy, very hard to tell on camera, I'm pretty sure. But again, I will work on clearing that up once we um once we go to the next stage. So I've got one, two, you know, I could sit there and just do scenery and locations 
right, right with this, each of these other windows, and then around these main parts, do a tangle if I want to. Um, I don't know yet, but I do enjoy the the discovery. Um, yeah. Oh, you know what? I almost wanted to do a lizard eye. It's looking like a lizard eye right here. But I think I'm going to make this. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Now we have a flying saucer. So that wasn't cheap. So all this will be dark. We'll speckle that. Okay. I'm not liking that. Uh, I, I changed my mind. <laughs> it's too big. It's covering so much of the thing that there's no, there's no atmosphere in it. So let's go small. There we go. And then doing scales, like scaling that are closer. Might allow us to have some more fun with this later on. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. So. We've got three locations of sorts. We've got the eye. Um, I might leave that for my signature, I guess. I don't know yet. But right now, now I think we're just going to go ahead and tangle. I think we're at a point now where it's like, okay, let's go ahead and give it something else. And we're going to start with the scallops because they're easy to do. or scales. And this part's always hard, trying to draw that little line inside. So it's just right here, right now, it's just implied. I'm drawing that line in here because I really struggle with trying to do that. So, okay. What else did I want it to do? As you can see, I'm kind of doing every other thing dark because I know that the value, the, the black and white, just buying black or values is going to pop, you know, whenever this is done. And also, I don't know if I'm going to print this on colored paper yet. I haven't decided. Most of the stuff I think I'm doing at home, I'm printing on my own thing because I don't really, you know, right now have the funds to go big with the printer and all that. So. We're not doing that monetization thing yet. Okay, so if I do this, and this is really crude. I mean, you can see how I'm penciling it. It's definitely crude. Let's not let's not um, get it twisted here. I'm still having fun though, and I'm still kind of just chilling while doing this, and I think that's part of the reason. I almost look at these like kind of like constellations. And I'll leave that there. Again, I didn't say this was impressive, but it is what it is. Okay, what do I want to do here? 
my brain is short circuiting when it comes to um, patterns and tangles right now. So, you know what? I'm looking at these leaves. And let's go ahead and do a nice little tangly vine with them. Some petals or extra leaves, I don't know, buds. Go in there with the more finer. Okay, so there's like kind of like some ivy, I guess you could say, that are just kind of coming down here. When in doubt, spiral it out. Just keep making circles until it makes sense. So there are times where I will be doing art or, or applying like an LCD approach to doing art and drawing. And what LCD is lowest common denominator. And, um, and I think that's okay because again, I feel like I'm, I'm wanting to be the intro to art or design for anyone that's maybe discovering a creative part of themselves for the first time. And then there are plenty of other people that are way more advanced and expert level that you can benefit from after you've gotten the bug and gotten the itch to want to create something. And, and that's, that's okay with me. So let's do this. Again, let's go ahead and utilize those values. Every other. And you can go ahead and fill in gaps if there's a lot of gaps. And all these spaces too. Okay, we have all this. Oh, this is this was intentional, I remember now. Okay, so now let's do or something. I don't know what these are. <laughs> but we're going to unify them right here. All right. Thank you for joining me, Marie. I appreciate you um, spending some time with us here. Um, Yes, bullet journal. Um, no problem. Um, that's something I still need to tackle and get 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 figured out is the bullet journal because I really enjoy the aesthetics and I love the planning community. They're really, really um open to having others join them. And um, you know, they welcomed me with open arms. So um, I've got a lot of appreciation for planning and journals and bullet journaling. So again, thank you for joining us and have a good night to Marie. And we're gonna keep going. We've got one, two, three more sections here. So do I want to sharpen this pencil and see if I if it spurs something else? You know what? I'm looking at some patterns that I have over here in front of me, and I think I might try to emulate those. I also have a little Black Panther stuffy here, and I love the, the design work for Black Panther and Wakanda. 
um, with those different like textile um, and, and like lines that they have. So I feel like I'm feeling a little Wakanda like, so I'm going to go ahead and yeah, we're doing it. That's it. We did all this complicated, really detailed, heavy texture stuff right here. Now we're going to kind of open it up to where it almost becomes like a gradient of sorts, like light to dark in a way. So thank you, Marie. I'll definitely look into it. I have the ADHD anti-planner coming and I've got like a thousand journals. <laughs> okay. See you later. Good night. All right. So Wakanda forever. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I definitely miss Chadwick Boseman, but at first I was a little too raw and I didn't want him recast, but in hindsight, I'd be okay if they found the right actor for it going forward. But right now I kind of want to see how this plays out with, with the loss and let, I believe in the, the, the director, I believe in the crew and all that. So, um, Maybe this will be our way of grieving, you know, him one last time and saying a proper goodbye. And, you know, and Namor is also one of my favorite characters. So, um, yeah, I think um, I'm just going to let it play out how it does and just go from there. Okay. So, you know, what's weird about, not weird, but what I've noticed about the Wakandan type of um, textile artwork or the lining, it's kind of like, almost as if panels on mechs or transformers. So, so we're going to go ahead and lean into that a little bit. And the vision, if you look at the vision, like the movie MCU version, there's also a lot of that happening. Like little control panels. And I don't know if that aesthetic comes from not just like, like, you know, African, uh, how do you say that word? Diaspora? I, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. But also, um, you know, I got, I got a favorite Kirby. It's got some kind of influence in there, too. So let's do some of those little fang angular things. As you can see, I'm having a very crude um, penciling session today. Like, I'm gripping this thing so tight, and it's just awkward lines. And we'll clean that up, hopefully, with the inks. But... Um, it's definitely kind of like, um, you know, uh, what should I say? I don't know, just tension, a lot of tension right now in, in my arm. I'm going to go ahead and do the necklace, I think. Just want to make note of that. Okay. Bit of Morse code right there. Definitely got to get that editing figured out so I can make smaller digestible videos for everybody so they can really tune in and see what I'm doing. Okay, so far I don't regret the decision to do this. Yeah, I dig it. I'm digging this a lot. Okay, that was fun. That was really fun to do. Um, okay, let's see. Let's keep it going. What do we want to do now? We have two more spaces to do. I'm going to do orbs, I think. It's kind of like black eyed peas. Or fish eggs. Let's connect them. Turn it 
darken in the gaps. Just to imply that it'll be dark when I ink it later on. All right. <clears throat> One more section to do. And don't be afraid to rotate the page if you need to. All right. I have a lot of crossing over with this with this ball of like, it's like wood twine thing. But do I want to do that? Or do I want to do something more floral? Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do this. Let's go ahead and bring it in again. And then we're going to Wow, this got, this got crazy, didn't it? So our last section right here, what are we going to do? Uh, I'm, looking, I'm just looking around right here in the room, just kind of what's in front of me and what is kind of just sticking out at me. And a lot of wood paneling, wood grain is sticking out at me. So I might just go ahead and do that. We go from one direction to the other direction. Let me shade a little bit, attempt to shade, I guess, on every other space so that you can actually kind of like differentiate some of the patterning. And I think we may have it. All right, so that A is more or less disappeared for now until we get to the inking stage and maybe the coloring stages. And maybe like with the exception of the I inside the A, the rest of the space will stay messed with and open. So that way all this type of busyness or chaos around it kind of is just like in the eye of the beholder type of deal. It's kind of like the theme of vibing with right now. Um, yeah, and, um, you know, some of this is hit or miss. Um, there's obviously a lot of mistakes in there as well, but at the same time, am I at peace with it? Yeah, I'm not even stressing it. I'm not even really tripping that, that I made a bunch of mistakes on that. It still felt good to do. I'm still enjoying it. And I like that there's um, all this All this basically is filled up now. And I think that I can go ahead and um, rest easy with that. And then later on in the inking stages, we'll use three different types of sizes for inking. And we'll play around with the line weights and maybe try and make things a little bit more cleaner when we get to that point. But as of now, I mean, I've got my composition. I've got this figured out, and I'm ready to move on with the next thing. So, so that was that. So now it's like, okay, so what are we going to do with right here? If this is all supposed to be a set, right, eventually, a set of prints or books. Well, I've got that very busy. And then we have all this stuff right here. Do I go every other one is busy or just go ahead and go full tilt to make them all like crazy patterning things? And then um, use a colored paper, maybe a tone paper um, 
um, to act as my as my middle uh, as as my as my fill basically. So that's going to be interesting to to try and look at, you know. So you've got me today on Thursday doing this. What am I going to feel like another day when I go to this one? That might be a whole different feeling. You might see a whole different output of lines, or that might just be my default and what I rely on when I'm stuck or don't know what I'm doing. So that's going to be fun to watch. Maybe the next time um, I am planning on streaming tomorrow. So, but I was wanted to work on on a on a on a piece that I'm dealing with coloring, and so I might do that fan art um, piece tomorrow. And so that way we can play around with some fundamentals when it comes to color theory and trying to blow in markers because that was something that I didn't feel as strong on. And then lately I started getting some results after asking my friend Mason um, for some tips on blending alcohol markers. So I might I might need to go talk to these kids and tell them to quit arguing and shouting in the background. But until then, um, you know, I'm going to um, probably do some of that fan art tomorrow. And um, you'll see uh, switch out with some fan art and commissions because I do have a queue I need to get through. And then um, otherwise, I'll always be talking about fundamentals, basics, and stuff like that. So, but um, so yeah. Anyways, um, let's see what I'm going to do now. We've got about, we're at 147 into this thing. I think about 12 more minutes. We'll go to the two hour mark and hopefully these, these bad little kids knock off their stuff when I'm streaming. You know, respect, respect your elder, respect the old man in the room. Okay. We've got some progress on one of the prints. We've got some progress on one of the accordion comics. We've got a few other things already done. I just need the inking, TLC of the inking happening right there. I might snap photos of those and then go ahead and put those in the Procreate or the iPad and play around with that there too. So I have an analog version as well as a digital version and see which one I like. Maybe I'll end up hybriding them and merging them together. I don't know yet. Oh, excuse me. So I could go back, try and go back to the iPad, but then that's me getting into something that I don't know if I'll actually, um, I feel like I got bit. Okay. You know what we don't have? We don't have anything for this. Don't have anything for this, and I want to know if I should just go ahead and um, lightly pencil things out, and then watercolor it, and then ink over it. So let me let me do this. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and um, focus. Okay, come on, autofocus work. We are going to go ahead and tangle inside the D um, right here, and then. We're going to kind of go easy on the outside and maybe let the color um, later on when I do coloring or inking or if I do a wash, take care of some of the work for us. So you saw me get really busy with the other um, pieces I did recently. So here I'm going to try to restrain myself and pull back a little bit, and then we'll go and um, see if we, if we don't hate it. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I want to pull up some reference. Let me open up a tab and pull up some reference. Just so I can, um, let me see. What? Vines. I'm going to pull vines. Uh, pulled up, like, literally, like, literal vines from, like, the other social media platform. That's not what I was trying to do. Here we go. It's another, it's more Ivy stuff that I've already kind of done already. But this one actually has some nice white buds to it. And floral. Okay, I think I've got an image I'm okay with. Let me go ahead and pull this dream yard over here. Let me get my find my vines. I lost my vines. <laughs> nope, that's not it. Uh, okay. Here we go. I found it now. Too many tabs. There we go. Okay. So this is called what I'm looking at right now that I'm taking some. It's called a passion flower. I've never heard of that. I've heard of passion fruit, but not passion flower. So what if we did 
what if we did start sketching out a little bit right here and um, kind of like just doodling part of it right here. I said I wasn't going to busy this and already I already picked a freaking complicated flower <laughs> to draw. Oops. So, and then this has this dark mark right around it. Just go and shade that a little bit so I can tell what I'm doing. And this is also purple, so we're going to shade that a little bit, create a little bit of a highlight right there so I know, so I can separate it later on. And this has got some shading. This is a plant, so a little beveled edge right here. Okay, that has... And now we get to these weird petals. Um, now I'm going to turn it around right here. And we're going to go ahead and bring it over here as well. Now I'm not the best at botanicals. In fact, I just, but I do like seeing that word botanicals. Botanicals. But I just think it'd make a great death metal song. And then the tips are dark. And we got some kind of fade, like a gradient happening right at the root of it as well. And of course, there's stuff happening in between these, and we'll address that here in a second. Right now, I'm just getting some road, a roadmap, some markings going so I can kind of give myself a guide of where I'm at or what I'm trying to do, or I'm stalling. I don't know. You decide. Now, you can also just do this with pencil and go over a really nice gradient and shading and um, just, you know, graphite if you wanted to, but um, that's not what I'm doing. I will be inking these. So right here, and then there's these bigger leaves that, that happen that have some kind of like veinage. And then so that's what I'm going to do as far as that goes. So right there, I just filled up that space and I think I'm okay with it. So I thought I was going to tangle inside this, but after doing that, I kind of like that. So in fact, I kind of like it so much that I'm going to do it again to this side, but I'm going to pick a different flower. So say goodbye to our passion flower, and let's do a black-eyed Susan Fine. What is up with that? Black-eyed Susan. Okay, black-eyed Susie, let's do this. All right, here's got a really dark hole. Can you see that on, on Twitch? And then... Well, I guess you could see that because I just had a racist Nazi jump in earlier and start going off with all kinds of stuff. I didn't get as much as I wanted out of that, actually. You know, it wasn't as much petals. Maybe I'll do a couple small ones so that way we can get our satisfaction. Because these are actually kind of fun to draw when you when you look at them. Yeah, I kind of dig these. And then they, there's kind of a bunch. And then there's a vineage happening. I'm a fan of vineage. You've heard of vineage whenever you draw muscular characters. I don't draw those that well, so I'll I'll stick to vineage instead of vineage. OK. 
Okay, and there's just kind of like a shaky line happening here. Bisect the space between inside this D. My son over here, he says something else really bad, but he's not here. Okay. I think I'm okay with the outside. I think I'm going to leave it alone because I might already feel myself getting like way too carried away with all this. So what do I do inside? Huh. I've got this. All right. I think I know what I'm going to do inside. Oh, it's taking forever. All right, let's bring up a video game. That's not what I meant. Oh, wait, here we go. Oh, very nice. Okay, so these right here will represent a starscape and so there'll be obviously like a burst coming out of each of these and I'll play with that later on but there's also like some clouds little milky ways and stuff like that So I think doing like a starscape or a galaxy Milky Way type of deal on the interior of the D will be kind of cool. And um, I don't know, just kind of like uh, as a contrast or juxtaposition to the to the actual botanical and floral things. So, and then obviously there'll be a lot of dots that will have to happen and a lot of darkness. I think this will definitely get painted. I think I'm going to have fun trying to paint these. So I'll mask off areas that I don't want messed mess with. And then so they'll be done in stages where I paint one thing and then I'll paint the other thing once I figure out some watercolor or gouache or whatever. So let's just go ahead and darken this right now. And maybe I'll do some eraser spots so you can kind of see where this is going. Okay, so if you can see this, now you can see how eventually we'll have different things happening right here. And then um, once these are all painted, there'll be like one painting, two paintings with a D, and then a third painting with the background. So that's three planes that we're dealing with right now, or depth of field that we're going to sit there and attempt to apply to this piece. And that's before we even take it into digital or even if, or I might go ahead and take a photo of that and get that into digital so I have a backup just in case I really foobar this. But uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of digging it. So I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of these tiles, but this is my first time working with a round um, tile or for tangles and all that. So it was actually really fun. And um, I'm debating whether or not I need to go ahead and just go and do a whole four set of round or go ahead and stick with um the square round square round and just make sure that the art kind of is all like in the same family and if that right there gives it gives it some more um interesting things you know interesting engagement i haven't decided yet we still have some time because i'm going to be penciling the other ones too i'll probably pencil um i'll probably pencil the um I don't know if I want to pencil, if I pencil the D, it's like, do I go with another floral, like 
another a different set of flowers and make those botanicals in, in, in space? And do I go with something else aesthetically for the A and the H? What if those urban drawings, what if I went out there and just kind of do some urban painting or urban sketching on, on the A and the H? And then this other stuff was more representative of like nature and, and the things surrounding us. And then that too is a more of a juxtaposition. So as you can see, I kind of get really, really into this stuff and start adding layers and thinking on layers and thinking in tangents. And they just kind of start, they end up becoming like this. So they become like this. So, you know, this big old ball. And then eventually, you know, somewhere inside there is, is me, I think. So. But as I've stated, I'm just leaning into things that are like that. So I had so much fun with the botanicals and just and, and all that. I definitely think I want to do it again on this other one. And I'll pick a different set of flowers. I might try and get a Pinterest board or mood board going before then. Um, you know, that's kind of scary because once I get into Pinterest, I can also fall down a well with that as well. But um, and I think for the A and the H, I will look up some more like urban type of settings or like buildings and, and cityscapes or things of that nature. So that way there's just like um, a nice juxtaposition. I think I have my concept figured out with this. So with that being said, let's do a little recap before it's time to call it a night here. Well, I have this set figured out of what I'm doing with it. That's one. These are already done as far as, okay. I have this one started. I don't quite have a handle on how I'm going to handle these yet. So maybe we just do another one a different day and see what happens. Maybe that is the journey. That is part of the pro process on this one because um, we're just experimenting right now. So maybe that's the whole point of this. And then we started one of our accordion books. We've got all the things penciled out with the exception of the tangles, which we might do with ink later on. I do have to write all the letters in for D and H and all that. I am running out of time because that first zine show that I'm doing is uh, mid-October. And I also have to get ready for workshops. Okay. And then there were some other tiles, and I don't know where I put them at. Did I put them behind here? Yes, I did. Okay. So to date, these are already pretty much done as well as far. They just need to be inked. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's if I don't count these little things that, that are hit or miss. I don't know if I'm doing anything with those yet. I might just do text treatments on that. And play with digital stuff on that. So at the very least, I've got six sets of tangles and ADHD focused doodles and concepts happening here. Um, what about the comics? <clears throat> the comics themselves, the sequentials. So maybe I'll go with six sets of these and then do one comic, try to finish at least one comic and then try and knock out a comic a month or two comics a month. Um, I have other obligations as well. So but I just know that I'm down this rabbit hole. I'm actually enjoying it. It feels like a, until I can get in front of a doctor and find out if there's therapy or, or medicine, whatever we're doing, that this is the best way for me to handle things is with my art and kind of leaning into it and, and exploring and I'm um, just letting stuff happen. So um, I am my, I might have to make a decision. Like if something starts to slow down, maybe I cut that away and just keep focusing on what I can finish. So, um, yeah, I've got some decisions to make here in the next couple of days because I think by next week I should be like all in on this because I am running out of time. But at any rate, let's see. We are over the two-hour mark. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone that did come stop by a lot more. So if you want me to stream on Thursdays, let me know. I'll, I'll probably do an evening stream on Thursdays. I kind of enjoyed the company that I had today. Um, tomorrow is another streaming day for me, which is supposed to be fundamentals. We will be working with alcohol markers. I'll be attempting to work on this piece of fan art that I'm doing. Um, you know, it's stuff that my kids are into and 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 all that. And um Friday, I wanted to be more about fundamentals and all that, you know, so I can, you know, relearn my fundamentals and basics and things of that and rebuild my foundation. But I also have like 
commissions and some fan art stuff I have to knock out that I owe people. So I think it'll be a little bit of both until I finally get through that queue, and then I can just go strictly about fundamentals. So um, Thursdays and Fridays, um, at this rate, the only day I'm not streaming is on a Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, I didn't stream because workshop Wednesdays because it was my daughter's birthday. But um, yeah, we're going to have to figure this out. Mondays, still the Mindful Mondays, um, and where I do a lot of this ADHD thing. The ADHD things might take over for the comic making until I can get through some of these things and get them on their way, because some of this is also supposed to be webcomic stuff as well. And then I'll switch back to gnomes and get and then start ramping up the gnome anthology stuff as well. So, okay, I'm rambling. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, later. I got to find the box that lets me say goodbye to you all and broadcast. There we go.